with one of the biggest uh, stories right now in Nigeria. In fact, this particular conversation has crossed borders. It's yeah. also trending in the Republic of Benin and Togo, and it concerns the education sector. A reporter uh, did an investigative piece where he said that he was able to purchase a certificate from a university in Cotonou, but then that same certificate was used for youth service here in Nigeria and then of course uh, proceeded to what, get a job or, or something of sort. But in case you've been wondering where exactly did this emanate from, we have joining us right here on the morning brief that reporter who carried out the investigation which has now led to the federal government suspending the verification and accreditation uh, of certificates from universities in the republics of bene and togo we have joining us on the morning brief this morning umar audu he is a reporter daily nigerian newspaper umar good morning thank you for joining us on the morning brief Good morning, Kaede and the crew, and thank you for having me. I mean, your work, you've seen the response, the reactions to the work you have done. What a way to start the new year. For some people, this has been a long time coming. For some others, they say, well, this might be a blanket decision that the federal government is making. But before we even get into the reactions to that, speak to us about that investigation you did. There are those who say, did you really have a direct uh, conversation with the school with the proxy is it really a certificate from the school but just tell us uh, how was this investigative piece conducted uh, what inspired it essentially then we'll talk about the findings and the aftermath all right uh, good morning nigerians and thank you once again for having me so i started this investigation in december 2022 and it was premised on the fact that we've got some nigerian students lamenting that they got uh, some of their former classmates or colleagues in school who were either dropped out or expelled for one reason or the other. And after a short while, you see these guys wearing NYC uniforms, serving the nation. And it became surprising to them and most of them that they feel cheated, that why will government allow this? Is this a bad that people can just go out of the country and um, purchase these degrees and come back and serve their fatherland. So that raised our curiosity. We've done a similar investigation in the past, which led to the government taking, I think in 2018, which led to the government taking some certain decision. But as if that, that's, uh, as if that was not enough, and these things keeps going on despite pronouncement by federal government, people, in fact, it got worse to the fact that you just be sitting in the comfort of your home and this certificate will be delivered to you just like you ordered for a pizza or something and you give them your location and uh, it's delivered to you. So it was that bad. So that, that was what motivated me to conduct this investigation. So essentially all of this that you got, the certificate, of course that image is now uh, all over, that certificate you serve in, uh, <laughs> Oh dear, just to think about that alone is, is just mind boggling. So you're saying you did all of that from here in Nigeria. You didn't have to cross the border, just to be clear. Yeah, I never traveled out of Nigeria during this investigation. Oh dear, so you never crossed the border, talk more of even attending classes and you got that. But the school, I imagine you've seen the reaction from the school mm -hmm. saying that, hey, we don't have a record of you, the reporter that did the story, that certificate did not emanate from us. Our certificate carries certain things and, well, it doesn't look like this is ours, even though they say investigation is being conducted uh, as well. So how do you react to that? Because the school is saying, no, 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 we are never part of this. Uh, this is not from us. Someone sent me the statement and I just laughed. And I think they were only trying to be clever by half. And that statement itself is self-indicting. Because, I mean, who sent my name to, to the Federal Minister of Education? Because it was the school that sent my name to the Federal Minister of Education. And from there, the ministry sent my name to the NYC saying that I've fulfilled uh, the requirement uh, set by, the standard set by the ministry to participate in the NYC. So who are those people? They know them. So, and I think, and I think that guy, the person who issued the statement is only trying to uh, I don't know, but that, I just look at the statement and I laughed. They have my records, and I sent them an email 
when after I finished everything, but they never responded. And even this response you are talking about, they never sent it to us. So I will just assume they are just trying to play games. So uh, let me let me come in here. From your investigation, how prevalent is this particular, you know, crime? Because that's the name. That's the right name to call it. It's a criminal offence. How prevalent is it from your investigation? It is. It is very very prevalent. Because when I went for the physical verification at the NYC camp, uh, Kubwa in Abuja, so you see a lot of people because. Uh, those, you know, this verification is done for foreign students alone. So, and when we got there, people from less troubled countries, we are easily, we are, we are easily screened because they have everything that is needed. But those of us from Kotonou and Togo, it was a tedious process. And you see over 50 of us liking one thing or, or the other. You see that your, stamp, uh, your entry and exit stamp is not up to date or resident permit so there were a lot of issues and those of us who were victims we are many we are more than 50. that was for that batch alone so previous in previous values it was still the same uh it was still the same issues for people who study from Benin. and what that tells you is, is that anybody you've seen having this kind of issues is definitely they don't pass through the process as it's supposed all right, let, 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 just a follow-up on that question. I, I did speak with uh, a former NUC executive yesterday, and uh, he talked about his degree meal. So let me get a few facts right. I, I, I checked out the school. I have about 50 staff, um, 3,000 students at the five courses. And uh, when they refer to degree meals, uh, sometimes they are not necessarily talking about schools that are not recognized by government. So the certificate you got from that university, did they offer that particular course? <laughs> I never offered the course. I was not even issued admission letter. I don't know where the school is located. All I did was to get this agent, and he requested for uh, amount, certain amount of money, which I paid. And on the receipt, it was issued that I was admitted into 300 level. So, and I paid 380,000 as tuition fee and and other expenses for the evaluation letter, even though. Uh, subsequently, there were demand for some more money, so which I paid. So I never, I never attended the uh, the school. I never attended. I never attended any class, either online, virtual, or or, or physical. So, Omar, you're not aware whether they offer you. I think the degree certificate uh, bear, uh, mass communication, right? Yes, please. So you're not sure whether they offer mass communication as a course in the university or not. You you're not sure. On their website, it's indicated that they offered mass communication. And also from the letter sent to the NYC from the Ministry of Education said they offered, uh, they are allowed to offer mass communication. So the school is accredited. The course is also accredited by the Federal Ministry of Education. Because that, that, that is a, the question I'm asking is quite critical because sometimes they say some schools are recognized. However, there are certain courses that are not um, accredited by the university. That's why, Bukola. Yes, uh, um, I, I watched that uh, interview that you had yesterday, um, Jeffrey, with the uh, former uh, VC, or what's the position now with the NUC? Uh, he said some are approved and some are not accredited. But you keep referring to the Federal Ministry of Education, uh, Mr. Moore. Is that Federal Ministry of Education the one in um, uh, Benin Republic or the one in Nigeria? I, I ask this because you talked about the delay in getting your letter of evaluation, which speaks to this question. Um, are they taking advantage of a loophole within our own system, or there are officials in our own um, institutions, be it the Federal Ministry of Education or the NYSC, that are working in cahoots with these agents? Yes, yeah, so I literally didn't have any business with Federal Ministry of Education in Benin. So is our Federal Ministry of Education here in Nigeria? Because I, uh, I mean, it is, they are the one responsible to, to evaluate and, satisfy, uh, and certify these universities outside Nigeria. So, and I think these guys, these rackets, have some people who they are uh, 
conniving with in the Federal Ministry of Education here in Nigeria to enable these things to be going on. Because if they are not working in cohort, as you mentioned, there is no way this could be possible. Another thing that uh, our guests on that program said yesterday is that um, if you check these universities, uh, you find that a lot of their own students are not in those universities, that more of Nigerian students are found there. In the course of your investigation, is this also one of your areas of concern? Did you ask questions to this effect? Yes, I got to gather that most of their own citizens don't attend this university. But here in Nigeria, they rush there because... Uh, it's a business for them, so and they don't care. But their own student knew, knows that this, these uh, schools uh, lack the standard to offer them the kind of education they need. So they don't go there. It's only here uh, 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 people from here in Nigeria who need express degrees that rush there within a month or two, they are back, and before you know, they, they get enrolled for the NYSC. And on the strength of your earlier response, do you think that the um, Federal Ministry of Education should be part of this investigation that has been um, uh, brokered by the, the federal government if they're working suspiciously now in cahoots with the, these agents that get these certificates? Yes, please, they should. They are the major, they are the major uh, people that this report indicted, except for the immigration also and maybe uh, NYC, but the, 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 most of the blames, to be honest, goes to the Minister of Education. And I'm, and I'm happy that this minister have taken this bold step. I just wish it wouldn't end in the yeah, president. Perhaps you don't get the question. But if, okay, if, sorry. If, if there's complicity in the Federal Ministry of Education, should they be you know, a judge in, their, in this court you know, that should also be looking at their own activities? No, you know, uh, from the statement I saw yesterday, I think the work uh, in collaboration with the DSS and, and other security agencies. So definitely they will involve uh, the security agencies. And in fact, yesterday, one of them invited me, one of the security agencies in the, uh, in the country invited me for a meeting which they require some information. So I, I think since the DSS is involved, uh, definitely uh, they, are, they won't be the judge in the, uh, on their own case. Well, we'll be expanding the conversation in a moment because there are always two sides to a story. And we have uh, joining us very soon, uh, well, the president of the Student Representative Council of ESGT, the school in question. Because for a lot of them, first, uh, they were shocked uh, at, the, uh, at the outcome of your investigative uh, reporting, then even double shocked at the response by the government or the reaction, the banning or suspension of accreditation of their certificate. So it's, it's a mixed bag for them. The school, as we said, has put out a response, but it's important to also speak to the students, speak to the body, and find out their own process. Uh, what is, how rigorous is the academic system? How did they gain admission? Can they uh, relate with what you experienced? Was that their experience as well? So we'll be expanding that in just a moment. We'll have uh, the president of the SRC join us. But I just want to ask you, seeing how the government uh, has responded now. The NANS, that's the national body of Nigerian students, says, well, this might just be a blanket decision, unfair, particularly for those who have done the work, who have gone through the right procedure, and now uh, they're, they're essentially being a uh, casualty, a collateral damage. I think that's a term I was, I was looking for. So do you, do you subscribe to that, particularly for those who are legitimately studying, those who legitimately got admission, those who attend classes and even came out with good results as a result of their hard work? Do you think it's fair on them as well? It's not, <clears throat> excuse me. It's not fair on those who legitimately pass through the process and uh, back their degrees because I know of people who went there, spent two, three years to uh, to kind of study. And I don't think, uh, just so this investigation, right, will unravel uh, those who legitimately uh, pass through the process, as is supposed, and also uh, indict those who, 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 who just uh, use nefarious ways to, to get their degree. So I don't think, honestly, I also, I will, but since, uh, what's it called? There will be investigation. 
from the security agencies. So let them please us uh, allow those who pass through the pr process legitimately to have their way so that it won't be a blanket, it won't be a collateral damage for them. Because I know, I personally know people who, who, who graduated legitimately and those who, who just used the illegal means. I, I know you've had to uh, sort of find protection for yourself, for lack of a better term, because of how, just how sensitive this issue is. Uh, have you received threats? How has the response, particularly to your person, been ever since the outcome of your investigative piece? Because, the, yes, the news is important, but the reporter is equally important. Yes. Uh and that's a concern a lot of uh, friends and family members have raised. They've been, serious, serious. They've been seriously concerned about my safety. And I hope, I, I feel as a journalist, uh, I, should, I should be allowed to do my job without any yeah, without threat or intimidation. So, and this speaks to the kind of uh, society we lived in when, when journalists can carry out their job peacefully and be sure of their safety. So I want to use this medium also to call on the authorities to make sure that, uh, please, I'm protected, although I'm in a safe place, but then I don't know who, what, what will happen next because I've been granting interviews, my report has gone viral, and so far no threat, but I just hope, please, the government should be alert, and once there's any threat, I will quickly reach out to them so that I get all the protection I need or so far no threat. You can guarantee your safety, Mr. Audu. Um, would you be willing to provide leads, you know, to aid their own investigation and to ensure that those culpable are brought to book? I ask this because you said earlier that uh, some of the sources that you, um, that provided the inspiration for your investigative story, um, you know, complained about uh, how some are dropping out and getting certificates, if I got you correctly, while they have had to do the work um, in that kind of situation? Of course, I, and I, like I mentioned also earlier, I, one of them called me yesterday. I, um, I honored their invitation. So there is no big deal. So that's the uh, essence of this investigation to sanitize the system. So if I will go all the way to, to do this investigation, then what would be the point if, I, if I'm not ready to assist the, the authorities in doing their job? So I'm always available. Uh, how, how rigorous, just before we go to our next guest now, how rigorous uh, was that screening process for students from outside the country when you got to the NYSE camp? What are the weak links uh, that... Um, on counterfeit students, so to speak, like, you know, uh, you, in, which you did undercover, will exploit when they get to their NYSE camp? Before I go to the NYSE camp, so once you get your evaluation letter and everything ready, so NYSE will subject you to online and physical verification. So that online, you are requested to submit all your documents. Then for the physical, you form with those documents and you verify them, physical verification. So but in that process, my stamp, my international passport, I, I had only one stamp on it, one entry and exit stamp, and which was even post-graduation. So, uh, so, and they said, no, this is not possible. How is, how is it possible that you travel out of country for a four-year course and your stamps and uh, your stamp are not up to date? So they sent me back, and that was in June. So the process was rigorous. I missed that badge. That's badge B, stream one. I missed it. I went back again. Uh, they couldn't clear me. You understand? So. All right, Omar, if you can hear me, uh, I have more questions for you, but uh, we understand that. Uh Prince Ufukimo Idio, the President's Student Representative Council of the University in question, the ESG University, uh, Benin Republic, has joined us. Mr. Idio, thank you for coming on the program. I just want to confirm that you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, I'm sure you've been listening in and you heard what uh, Mr. Umar Aldo had said about uh, getting this certificate from your university in six weeks. And uh, that story has gone viral across Nigeria. 
the federal government has acted and has suspended evaluation and all of that uh, from Togo and Benin Republic. I, I just wanted to get your quick reaction uh, to what you heard and what's the position of this school. Okay, Mr. Idiot, did you get my question? Are you with me? Yeah, Mr. Did, did, Hello? All right, Mr. Idiot, if you can hear me, uh, I want to be sure. Did you get the question I asked? Oh, God. Let's go. All right, let, let me come back to you, Mr. Aldo. Um, one of the things I wanted to find out, I'm sure that um, in doing a report, you would have kept um, record. They say the best way to follow a story is to follow the character. So let's do some money tracking. You say you spent some money. Um, by your computation, uh, from getting the certificate to the people you had to deal with at uh, maybe the ministry, and even at the border, at the NYC, I want to find out, I want to follow the money, how much was involved in all of this, because that's a critical part of the story. But before, before you respond to my question, uh, Mr. Idio, I understand that we, uh, your connection is better now. Uh, did you hear the question I asked before I switched? All right, let, let, let me come back to you, Ms. Aldo, if you can respond to my question on following the money. Okay, uh, I spent uh, roughly 600000 Okay, so Ruff, let, 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 walk us through how you spent this money. How much okay, did you spend so, to get the certificate? Uh, so I think I, when I read your story, I, I heard, I, I saw that you... Uh, when the issue of whether or not you had, you had to cross the border to go to the school, uh, you needed to spend some money. So walk us through all of the elements of that money. Let's track the money. Okay, so I didn't go to the border. Okay. I only gave money to an immigration official to help me get, uh, what's it called, ECOWAS passport and a backdated stamp for Nigerian immigration and Beninua. How much did you spend in doing that? I spent about 150,000. 150,000? Yes. Uh, so I wanted to put it on record that with 150,000 um, for those who carry out all of this. Now, let, 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 me, let me find out from you. Uh, Bukola has asked uh, the question, but let me go a little deeper. Uh, in terms of when you went to the NYSC camp and you had to go through all of this screening, uh, one of the things you mentioned in your report is the fact that w when you were trying to mobilize and all of that, uh, the, your, your phone number and your email, they flagged, but when you were able to resolve that, how were you able to you know, bypass maybe the th thumbprint and all of that? So that was, that was one of the amazing things about this thing. So the initial, the number, the phone number I used for my legitimate NYC in 2018 were flagged. So, but I switched to my alternative phone numbers and uh, uh, phone number and email address. So, but for the fingerprint, for the biometric fingerprint, there was no issue at all. As soon as I put in my fingerprint, it just captured it and I moved to the next stage of the uh, registration. So, in your first, uh, when you did your first, there were fingerprints, right? Of course, there was fingerprint. And throughout the service year, we had monthly biometric clearance. Oh, so dear. what happened to that database? That was my, that was my, <laughs> that was surprising. Well, well, thank you so much, Mr. Uma Odu, uh, reporter with Daily Nigerian Newspaper, uh, for taking the risk, uh, because we know what it, it involves. It's, it's expensive, it, it, uh, it's dangerous and all of that. And it takes a lot of time to be able to come up with reports like this. But You've done a noble thing to make the federal government, you know, act on this, and everybody's now aware of what's going on. And we hope that the investigation will eventually reveal in detail what you found out as far as all of these degree mills are concerned outside the country. Well, we'll go on a quick break. When we come back, we will switch gears. Uh, we did talk about it at the opener, about the fact that, look, if you're looking at 2024 to get the dream job, mm, we got you covered. That's a good reason to stay on the morning brief. Join us again.